So today I'm working on a paring knife for my sister for her birthday. I know she's one of those people who's been waiting rather patiently for me to make her a knife. So today I'm going to do it. But let's rewind a little bit here so you can catch up. Alright, so for this paring knife, I'm going to be using 15N20. It's a nickel alloy steel. And this particular bar stock is just over a sixteenth of an inch. Uh, this is the pattern I will be making, using. So the next step is to take this little knife and heat treat it. Because it is so thin already, it is wise to harden it before I grind it. I like to use my little do-it-yourself forge I made a long time ago to heat treat. And then I've got this way bigger forge that I bought from Atlas Knife and Tool. And I am hoping to have some forging videos coming up soon. So make sure you subscribe so you'll get those. Alright, so I hardened the blade, and according to the heat treat charts I have read, 15 and 20, you heat it up to 1480 degrees Fahrenheit, and then you quench it in oil. That should get you a Rockwell hardness of about 65 out of the quench. Well, since my last knife video, I was able to get some Japanese hardness testing files, which has really helped me step up my game. So we know 15 and 20 should be around 65. So I'm going to start with the 60 file and see if it skates it. And it does. Did you hear how high pitch that is? It's not dull and low. So this knife is above 60 Rockwell. It's about as accurate as you can get without having a heat treat oven and a hardness tester. And now I'll go temper it at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours twice. And that should bring us down to a Rockwell hardness of 61. So I decided for this paring knife, I'm going to be using stabilized black walnut as the handle. I'll be going with a 3 16th inch brass rod for the pins. Brass and walnut just go together real well.
So now that I've had the main contouring done using the old shoe shine method, uh, there's a lot of scratches going in different directions on the tang of the knife. So here's a trick that I've picked up over time on to get rid of those scratches consistently and quickly. Uh, I use some good quality 220 grit paper. This is Rhino Wet, which is the best stuff on the market. And then I like to use something flat with leather on the back to help me get those scratches out and blend the line between the steel and the wood a little better. See, I don't know if you'll see in the camera, but I've already started to make these scratches more uniform. And if you have a place of heavy scratches, you can focus on that more for a little bit. But when you're done, you want to do final passes over the whole length of the tang to give it that nice, consistent scratch pattern. After, I don't know, maybe five or ten minutes with some elbow grease, and I got this nice, uniform scratch pattern. And now I can just take it up the grits and make it look as shiny as I want. And now I'll just continue sanding the wood uh, with 220 grit with no backer until it's nice and clean and I can't see any vertical lines from grinding or uh, the shoe shine. Then I'll continue up the grits probably to about 800. I'm going to uh, put a light coat of oil on it because as I'm working with this walnut, I think somebody got me. I don't think this is really stabilized. Uh, it doesn't smell stabilized anyway, so I think it'll take an oil. Alright, so here we are at 800 grit. Super smooth, super clean. Now we're ready to put the oil on. Today I'll be using Birchwood Casey's Genuine Oil, a satin oil finish. It's similar to linseed oil in its coloring effect, but it dries much, much quicker and harder. So I went to edit the video and I noticed this weird little mark. And I came down here going, what the heck? Did I miss a hammer mark? Did I miss when I was peening the pins and hit the wood and never noticed? It's the oddest thing I've ever seen. I have no idea what it is. It's not a scratch though. I can't put my fingers in it. It's perfectly smoothed over. And when I rotate it, it disappears from certain angles. I have no idea what that is. But clear as day when I said it like that. So weird. All right, and now it's time to sharpen this little paring knife. I'm just gonna be using my Lansky system. That's what I feel like using today. So that's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna start off with 280 grit stone, get a nice even edge on both sides, move up to 600 grit, then I'll start testing how it cuts. And as soon as I like how it cuts, that's when I'll refine the edge with the 1000 grit ceramic.
yeah. I would say that would cut some tomatoes. This is just Harbor Freight magazine uh, paper. A lot harder to cut in this fashion than regular paper. This little parry knife is actually almost unnecessarily sharp for its job. I'll get it cleaned up, then we'll get those glamour shots. And there we have it, a little paring knife for my sister. Uh, just one thing real quick before we go. I left this blade with a satin finish on purpose. Uh, food is less likely to stick to the blade when you have a nice satin finish on it rather than a mirror polish. However, because this is a carbon steel, it will change colors with use. That's called a patina. So I will be providing my sister with these ultra fine gray Scotch-Brite pads and uh, she should be able to maintain the look of the blade uh, by using those pads periodically. And as always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd be so kind, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and check out my older videos. Until next time, I'll see ya. And happy birthday, Stephanie. I hope you love the knife.